Making pasta with 20% green leaf powder can address several important issues. The first is nutrition. Pasta enriched with dried moringa leaf powder has significantly more protein, iron, calcium, and magnesium, along with more vitamin A, E, and K, and more fiber than regular pasta. The second issue is environmental. Over 3 billion people, nearly half the world's population, eat meals cooked on fires of wood, charcoal, crop residues, and dried animal dung. The three stone cooking fires and traditional stoves without chimneys are very inefficient and very smoky. Globally, indoor air pollution from cooking is the single greatest environmental health factor. It causes lung disease, cancers, and eye damage, mainly to the women who do the bulk of the cooking and to the children they care for. Gathering firewood is a physically exhausting and dangerous task for millions of women. Growing demand for cooking wood and charcoal is a major factor in deforestation. Leaf-enriched pasta cooks very quickly, about seven minutes in boiling water, compared to beans that usually cook for one to three hours. Obviously, this could reduce the need for cooking fuel and lessen some health and environmental problems. A lot of great work has been done promoting low-cost solar cookers and energy-efficient cook stoves, but fast cooking, high-nutrition foods could also play an important role in resolving this problem. The third issue that leaf-enriched pasta could help address is that more women are working and have less time for preparing meals. Convenience foods, like instant ramen noodles, are increasingly replacing traditional meals based on grains and beans. This is partially responsible for the growing double burden of obesity and micronutrient deficiencies in children. Not only is leaf-enriched pasta nutritious and quick cooking, but kids who often don't like eating leafy greens generally enjoy leaf-enriched pasta. Plus, when it is dried and well sealed, it can keep for up to a year. So much for why to make green pasta. Now on to how. Start with four cups of bread flour or all-purpose flour, one cup of dried green leaf powder, and one cup of water. You can use almost any edible leaves that are dried and finely ground or powdered. We recommend this 4 to 1 ratio because 20% of dried leaf powder is about the most we can add without altering the texture or flavor too much. Of course, some leaves are more nutritious than others. Whole wheat flour mixed with leaf powder generally results in pasta that doesn't hold together well. If you're looking for gluten-free pasta, there's some recipes on the internet that you could probably add the leaf powder to. There's no gluten in any of the leaf powders. Mix all the ingredients thoroughly together. You may need a bit more water, depending on how dry the flour and leaf powder are. But if you do, add it very cautiously, as it's easy to make the pasta dough too wet. Knead the dough for at least 5 minutes. 10 is better. Pasta dough is much drier than bread dough. It should feel heavy but elastic. If it's too wet, the pasta will stick together and make a big mess. It's really more of an art than a science, and it usually takes a few tries to get the hang of it. After kneading, form the dough into balls a bit larger than ping pong or golf balls. Flatten the balls with your hand or with a rolling pin. The next directions are for using a small manual pasta machine. Some methods for people without the pasta machine will follow. The small manual pasta machines usually sell for about $40 to $75 U.S., either online or through gourmet cook shops. We recommend the Mercato Atlas and Imperia brand Italian-made machines. Clamp the machine to a sturdy table or counter. You can adjust how far apart the rollers are. Start with them at the widest setting. On this machine, that's number one. Roll the flattened dough through the widest setting, then fold it in half and do it again. 
Repeat this two or three times. Then begin rolling the sheet of dough through the rollers, bringing the rollers closer together after each pass. Most pasta machines have six to eight thickness settings. You can usually skip some of them, going from the widest to the narrowest in three or four settings. So you could roll the dough through on setting one, setting three, setting five, and finally setting seven. Stopping one setting before the finest, on six instead of seven, will make the pasta that takes a bit longer to cook and to dry, but it'll hold up better without breaking if it's going to be dried for later use. After you roll your sheets as thin as you like, trim them to a reasonable length. Next, change the handle to the cutter attachment and then roll them through the cutter. Most machines have two cutters, one for fettuccine, about a quarter of an inch wide, and one for spaghetti, about a sixteenth of an inch wide. The fettuccine is not as fragile as the spaghetti, which is important if you're drying it. Try to crank the sheet through the cutter rollers as smoothly as possible, catching it on the back of your hand as it comes through. Then hang the freshly cut spaghetti over the dowel or bamboo on the drying rack. For social programs and micro enterprises, a larger and more expensive version of the pasta machine is available from Imperia. The process of rolling and cutting the pasta sheets is basically the same on the larger machine. To make a simple yet effective drying rack, cut 45 degree angles on both ends of two identical sticks that are about four feet long. Drive a nail into the sticks every six inches or so. You don't need nails so close to one end that the pasta would hang on the floor. After all the nails are in place, set the two sticks against the wall about three feet apart. Put a brick or a rock in front of each stick so that they don't slide. Then drape the freshly cut pasta over the half-inch dowels or smooth bamboo. Start hanging the pasta and add dowels or bamboo as needed. When the pasta is dry, it can easily be slid off the dowels or bamboo. With some patience, pasta can be made without a machine, but it's quite a bit of work, and the results will be less uniform. The first steps are the same. Mix together four cups of flour, one cup green leaf powder, and one cup water. Then knead well and form into balls. Flatten the balls with your hand, and then roll the dough as thin as you are able to with a rolling pin or a bottle. Then trim the sheet of dough to make it as rectangular as possible. Next, use a straight edge and a sharp knife to slice the dough into strips on a cutting board. Use the knife to lift the strips and then hang them on the drying rack. A broom handle or a pipe between two chairs will work if you're only making a small amount. Whether the pasta is fresh or dried, the noodles can be easily slid off the dowel or bamboo into rapidly boiling water. Cook the pasta and then drain it after about seven minutes. Another thing you can do with the pasta sheets, whether they're rolled by hand or by machine, is to make ravioli or empanadas. Many cultures have variations on this theme of a bit of meat or cheese or beans wrapped in a sheet of dough, and then steamed, boiled, or fried. Momos in Tibet and dim sum in Korea are a couple of examples. To make ravioli, cut circles in a pasta sheet with a small canning jar lid or something similar. They'll hold up better if you make the sheet slightly thicker than you would for fettuccine. Then put a heaping teaspoon of your filling, we're using bean paste here, in the middle of the disc and cover it with another one. Seal the ravioli by pressing a fork all around the edge. 
An alternative method used in Honduras is to start with a larger disc of pasta dough, place a tablespoon of filling in the middle, and fold it over. The edge of these half circles are then sealed with a fork. The easiest way to make leaf-enriched pasta doesn't require rolling the dough flat at all. It's a variation of the German food spätzle. A very firm ball of pasta dough is grated through a cheese grater. This can be done directly into a pot of boiling soup or broth, and the little shavings of pasta cook almost instantly, adding some body and a lot of nutrition to simple soups. They can also be cooked separately and served with butter, or dried for later use. One of the things we like most about pasta is that it's fun to make with kids. We can make it with different colors, green from leaves, red from dried beet powder, yellow from turmeric, for example. It's like an edible Play-Doh. Kids can draw pictures of their dog or house or on the pasta sheets or make tie-dyed or rainbow, or even Salvador Dali pasta. It's a good way to introduce leaf-enriched pasta in a program, and the kids are usually more enthusiastic about eating pasta that they know how to make. Really, this is true with adults as well. These college students are studying international public health. They made leaf-enriched pasta at a Leaf for Life workshop, and they're eating the product of their labor for supper. It's very hands-on learning, and a lot of them came back for seconds. Green pasta is also well-suited for micro-enterprise projects. This women's cooperative in a Brazilian shantytown is making leaf-enriched pasta to sell, with a larger version of the hand-crank pasta machine. Unlike many nutritionally fortified breads, drinks, and yogurt, the leaf-enriched pasta doesn't need to be refrigerated. Because it keeps for up to a year once it's well-dried, the women aren't under great time pressure to sell their product. If it becomes more popular, more parents could pull out a bag and make a super nutritious meal for the family in almost no time at all. Thanks for watching.